So Roma, which is the new film by Alfonso Cuaron, which is inspired to some extent by his own childhood memories, sees him returning to uh, to Mexico, um, set in 7071, a household in the titular district in the Colonia Roma, uh, where a mother is raising her children while her husband is increasingly an absent presence. <clears throat> Meanwhile, um, a domestic help, Cleo, basically looks after the house and the family, and she, in fact is pretty much the focus of the film. We see her tending the kids, we see her swabbing the floors, we see her doing the washing, we see her performing the work that is that is never done. And the mother and the maid could not be from, you know, more different backgrounds. And yet during the course of this I mean, on the one hand, it is an epic drama because it has real sort of epic sweep to it, but it is also very very intimate. It is about, you know, a family, a, a sort of a, a group of people. During the course of the movie, they both encounter <coughs> oddly similar problems based on, on one level, the inconstancy of men. Both of them are let down by and, you know, ab- either abandoned or betrayed by the men in their lives. Meanwhile, in the background, huge political upheavals are happening in the country and these upheavals mirror the domestic traumas that are going on. It's a really remarkable film. <clears throat> the most remarkable thing about it is, I suppose, the visual style is that it's shot in you know widescreen monochrome with a camera that appears to be like a kind of floating, all-seeing eye. What we get is the story told in long takes, you know, so the action happens in something you know like real time within each individual take. You see conversations play out in long takes, and during this, the camera will pan, will glide slowly back and forth through the action, no matter how frenetic the action itself actually becomes. I mean, there are scenes of characters walking past marching street bands. There's scenes of riots. There's a scene in which there's an earthquake. There's a scene of raging, raging sea. But the camera just retains this kind of floating, slightly um, slightly removed uh, look to it. And in one sequence, in more than one sequence, the camera revolves all the way around as if to show us the totality of this world that's been that's been created. And there are times that the extraordinary uh, visuals of the film can appear distracting. I mean, one of the things that happens is that the sequences are so brilliantly choreographed that it, you know, what what the film is able to do is to tell a really complicated story through one shot. I mean, there's one sequence in which we see two women go into a furniture store and then out of the window of the furniture store, they see this uh, this melee breaking out in the street that then comes into the furniture and it's all done in, in one shot. And occasionally there was a part of me that thought, I'm so overwhelmed by how technically impressive this is that it's making me think, God, what a technological achievement, which is strange because actually it is a very, very personal film. And, um, you know, so it's a peculiar quibble to say that the virtuosity of something sometimes distracts. And I think also that may be a function of if you're a film critic, you kind of you end up looking at technique. And, you know, when somebody said when you notice the editing, it means the editing is is better. Well, in the case of this, it's entirely possible if I if I if I was if I wasn't watching it freshly, I wouldn't even have noticed those things. The other thing is it's a Netflix back release, but it is getting a proper theatrical release. And there's often this question about whether or not you should see something in the cinema or see something on the small screen. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm open to all different suggestions but usually when people say you should see something in cinema they mean because because of the visuals although the visuals in this film are astonishing the thing that really should get you into the cinema is the soundscape because they have worked so intensively on the soundscape it's one of those films you can watch with your ears because there are there's this incredibly dense atmos soundscape in which you can hear stuff going on in the streets in the background. You can hear intimate conversations. You hear ambient noise. I mean, the sound really puts you right there in, in the middle of this world. There are hints of Fellini stylistically, but it's it's definitely Quaron's film. It's a totally personal project. I mean, you know, he wrote it, he edited it, he shot it. It's, they shot it in sequence, so it was played out, you know, so each character you know, came to each event after the previous event. People only found out what the full nature of the script was as the project evolved. And it feels like a really, really personal thing. So it's a it's a strange kind of combination of a very personal film with an extraordinary technical prowess that I think is quite remarkable. I, I do need to see it again, definitely, because like I said, the first time round, there was the one thing that slightly threw me was being taken out of it slightly by marvelling at the technical virtuosity of it. When for a film as personal as this, I felt that what I should be was just engulfed in it.